Shalom. Giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem Yahusha, Bashem Rechak Wadash. Governor to the elder apostles and bishops of the great Muslim who well, peace, blessings, and salutations. Until the full light tabernacle of David scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, I had to, you know, spend the block on this, uh, this breakdown, you know, dealing with Revelation 13, 16, 17, right? And, uh, we know that they are saying that when it says he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, it's talking about nations, right? In which, uh, you know, we did pretty, you know, we did plenty of lessons on it, all right, breaking it down, showing how flawed that logic is. But this is another thing that I notice, and it's a complete contradiction. And this is why you have to, you know, be mindful when we, you know, hear these other people. When you know something ain't right and you hear something ain't right. People that are watching. This is where your discernment comes in. You have to be able to. Have the, the, the spirit of discernment to know. What's right and what's wrong. That's why it says in first John. Hereby we have the spirit of truth. We it's like it, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Let me get that real quick. Let's go to uh first John four. It is first John four, verse six. It says, We are of the most high. He that knoweth the most high heareth us. He that is not of the most I hear of not us, hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And that's through, you know, the unction, you know, having the spirit, having the inspiration of the most high to discern and differentiate between what's true and what's not. All right. And um, that comes by way of understanding these scriptures, you know, constantly reading and studying and also having critical thinking. Knowing how to think. You can't just be somebody that just hears. You have to internalize what you're hearing. The simple believe of every word, but the prudent man look well to what's going. All right. And, and how you hear things is just like it, the scriptures compared it to your taste. You know how you, you, you could taste certain things and know what's missing. All right, what's uh, not needed, what's too much of, because, you know, you have that experience of knowing how to, you know, consume and eat and, and taste certain things because you have those experiences. Like, let me get a uh, real quick. There's a scripture in Job. And I believe it's in... Um, I think it might be 12. <laughs> Let me see real quick. No, let me see. Uh, I think it's Job 6. Let me try Job the 6th chapter. This is a scripture in Job that, you know, now that I mentioned it, it got me thinking. But this is applies to that spirit of discernment. When you hear something, when you hear people speak a certain thing, you have to try it. Scriptures say, try the spirit by the spirit, whether they be of the most high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go. This is uh, Job 6, verse 30. It says, is there iniquity in my tongue? Cannot my taste discern perverse things? Right? And it's another one. Job 12 and 11, do if not the ear try words and the mouth taste his meat? 
Job 34, verse 3, for the ear trieth words as the mouth tasteth meat. So just like you could taste something and it doesn't taste right because it's missing something or something needs to be added. The same way you hear when you hear something, you know, oh, something ain't right with that. You know, you question it, you use your logic, you know, you use your own thinking and you know what the scriptures say. So somebody says something and it's not supported by the scriptures. You can hear what, what they're saying is not uh, valid, is not sound. That's the discernment that you have to have. And it takes growing from a babe to being nurtured, all right, growing by, by the, you know, sincere milk of the word. Then you start to get into the meat a bit and you mature. All right, Hebrews 5 and 14, but strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And, you know, the full age is talking about those that are complete in the understanding. And it's from uh, the word teleos. And it says, brought to its end, finished, wanting nothing necessary to completeness, perfect that which is perfect. All right, consummate, humid, integrity, and virtue of men, full grown, adult, full of age, mature. So you got to have mature ears, all right? Like, like it says in um, 1 Corinthians 14, I believe verse 20, how be it in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. All right, and uh, I think there's one more, I believe it's in Sirach. So you develop the skill of being able to hear things and the moment you hear it, you know it's actually true or it's... Uh, an error. This is why we vet guys when we listen to them, when we watch their videos. Uh, Sarag, I believe is 19. <laughs> no, it's not 19. Yeah, so rock 36. So rock 36 and 18. It says, The belly devour of all meats, yet is one meat better than another. As the palate tastes diverse kinds of venison, so do of an heart of understanding false speeches. And this is was you know, when we watch these videos and we vet them. And we listen to them. We 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 can discern when somebody's speaking something false, because you study the scriptures. And uh, I think going back to that scripture in Job that I read, was it Job twelve and eleven? Let me get it in the. Yeah, CSB. It says, doesn't the ear test words as the palate taste food? And what is a palate? It says, the roof of the mouth separating the cavities of the nose and the mouth invertebrates. Two, a person's appreciation of taste and flavor, especially when sophisticated and discriminating. All right, having your senses exercised like it says back in hebrews 5 so this is why we're able to you know harp on different points and in, in arguments and cast down these strongholds you know break them all down so going back to you know this argument that is talking about nations and how he tried to cross reference revelation 18 with Revelation 13 that was a that, that was a, a a blatant error that was a big mistake because Revelation 18 is describing the destruction the demise of Babylon but what led to Babylon you know being that great whore that all these nations 
got rich off of. They they got rich. They made their wealth because of trade. Right. Revelation is is talking about the authority, all right, of the, of this beast, and how it's gonna have the power and authority to issue out a a a a brand mark that everybody's gonna have to receive. It's a new economic system that everybody's gonna come up under if they want to continue to live, buying and selling, making a a, a living. And it showed that you're you're devoted to them as they're they're uh they're your master, they're your they're your lord, and you grant them all control. No more uh, privacy. All right, he wants you to show your allegiance uh, allegiance to him. Revelation 18 is talking about the destruction. Now, what I want to point out is how. If he's going to cause everyone, it's, it's just, we're going to deal with 16. All right? And he calls of all, both small and great. So they say both small nations and, and great nations, rich nations and poor nations. Now, keep that in mind, right? It's rich and poor, huh? Free and bond. So free nations and then you got bond. So you got a, a, an entire nation that's in bondage. So they're they're in they're in captivity. Now I wonder what nation that's in captivity, that's in bondage, that's doing commerce with Babylon and getting rich. Right? To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And then he immediately goes to Revelation 18. Now what we see in Revelation 18, all right, because it speaks of how, you know, all these nations that got rich off of this great whore had a relationship. They all took of that 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 wine, which is the philosophies, the, the, the westernization, all right, Western culture, the ideologies of Western culture. They took on that in order to have that open relationship with, with Babylon so that they can trade and, and, and gain wealth, right? But after it gets destroyed, they will no longer have that relationship, which will in tune destroy the, the wealth that they were generating. So one should ask, the, ask himself, his or herself, if rich, uh, if, his, if, if poor nations and bond nations are a part of this, how, how does this apply to them? Where do they apply in, in in this situation when they're supposed to be poor, and then you have you have those that are supposed to be in bondage? Because when you go down here, let me, uh, let me jump down. Revelation. Um, 18 and uh, I'll, I'll just start at 17. It says, For in one hour so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dung on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich. All that has ships by the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour is she made desolate. So where do the poor nations come to play in this prophecy here? How, how, how does this apply to the, 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 the small? How does it apply to the poor? How does it apply, apply to the bond in Revelation 13 and 16? This is talking about those who are wailing because of the fact that their trade is stopped because of the destruction of Babylon. So they can't get they can't further be rich anymore. So this is rich nations that traded with America that are weeping and wailing. So what does this show? A contradiction. 
this cannot this chapter cannot be applied to Revelation 13, where it says that and he calls of all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. Here, this is talking about merchantmen who who made their countries rich by trade with Babylon. So this is how you know it does not apply and therefore this is not the correct way to teach. This is an error. You put these scriptures together and you hear these people, you should be able to discern that. Totally wrong. And it's up to these brothers if they're going to, you know, see their error and, and correct it and repent. But a lot of these dudes, you know, they're they're just uh, they're dead set on what they're going to believe, you know, and ironically, like they try to use in Timothy, where it says they they their uh their their mind and conscience is seared with a hot iron. Well, that's exactly what's happening with them. Their mind and conscience is seared with a hot iron, because if they don't repent, if they're if they're gonna continue to teach this, even though we're pointing out the the holes and the errors in their teaching, then it's more than likely that applies to them. Their their mind and conscience has been seared. It's branded, all right with this understanding, which is the incorrect understanding. So I just want to point that out, man. Another flaw, another ridiculous uh, uh, logic. Another part, you know, which the, the elder Manada Zagba mentioned on the comment board, we thought that y'all taught that the MOTB is sin. And we know individual people sin. So you would have to change that. You can't teach that it's sin if it only applied to nations and not individual people. But now the elder Yashawam will put up the video. Individual people is what make up nations. So it's like, what are we talking about here, man? This should be a no-brainer at this point. These guys are they're 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 totally wrong. But we're not, you know, we're not angry with these dudes, but hopefully they can see the error of of what they teaching and and change it and, and repent. But if they can't see it, then they, you know, it's 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 all of the Lord's will. The deceived and the deceiver are his. All right, you got those whose eyes that are open and those whose eyes aren't open. They have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not. And that's, that is not under our control. But uh, I just want to point that out and the Lord willing is edifying. Hey, study them scriptures, man. And, 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 you know, pray that the Lord give you that spirit of discernment so that you don't go astray. Jake, they, they just go with whatever. As long as it sounds good. And you got men who are skillful in the scriptures, but they're they 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 they're skillfully um deceitful. They know how to generate and put scriptures together that don't go together, but some scriptures might have similar wording and they'll apply that as if it's a precept. So you gotta know when they're doing that, because you know, you got men that have, you know, they have that slight. It it talks about cunning. You know, cunning men by the you know by the slight of cunning men. Was that uh, Ephesians? Ephesians uh, four and fourteen. This is why this is why you got to be very careful. It says uh, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness whereby they lay and they lie in wait to deceive. So some men actually have the skill to to try to put precepts together that don't really go together, but it's it, it it'll sound like it to you know teach their narrative, and we have to be mindful of that. So yeah, that that's pretty much it. I just want to throw that out there, and Lord willing, this is edifying.
Kolo ya bashimiao shai. Shalom.